Yo, I done six shows in a row, so my voice is hurting. Fans wanna hear what you're in person. Boy, oi. She want a man from Brom, but she sell with a boy from Burton. I still see feds on the block, still see the boy them lurking. He thinks I'm a poisonous person, inside the boyfriend's burning. There's too many keyboard warriors. Hi there guys, what is up? Adam from The Beard Solution here, back with another Beard Necessities video. And in today's video, I am going to be talking about the differences between vellus and terminal hairs. I'm also going to be touching on the differences between androgenic hair and our scalp hair. Uh, and if you don't use minoxidil for the beard, but you still want to know about those different types of hairs and the distinctions between them, then do feel free to stick around as you might learn something as well. Now we'll start with discussing the differences between androgenic hair and the hair on our scalps because they are actually very very different. Now an example of androgenic hair is our facial hair and the reason it's called androgenic hair is because it's caused by androgens which are male hormones. In particular an androgen called dihydrotestosterone which is converted from testosterone by the enzyme 5 alpha reductase and is said to be anywhere between 3 to 10 times more potent than testosterone itself. In fact it is actually responsible for a lot of our male characteristics including our deep voice but for the purposes of this video I'm going to be focusing on DHT's role on our facial hair growth and also the effects that it can have on the scalp as well. Now it's very important to point out that there is a distinct biological difference between scalp hair and androgenic hair, especially in the cases of people that suffer from androgenic alopecia or male pattern baldness. And what male pattern baldness essentially is, is a genetic sensitivity to the hormone dihydrotestosterone. That's right, the hormone that actually causes our facial hair growth is the same one that causes men to go bald, which is why, in general, you see bald men with greater, bigger, burlier beards than men with full heads of hair. Now, the effects of androgenic alopecia can be extremely severe with people losing basically the majority of their hair, or it can be quite minor with people just suffering from a receding hairline. And it's important to point out that not everybody will actually suffer from male pattern baldness. It is only those with the androgenic alopecia gene. And it's around about 60% of the population that actually have that gene. So it's just over half of us that are likely to experience some hair loss as we get older. Now let's look at the difference between vellus hairs and terminal hairs. And in this section, I aim to dispel a few myths as well that often get floated around the minoxidil beard community. But before I go into all of the myths and dispel them, I want to touch on the difference between vellus and terminal hairs. And we'll start with vellus hairs or vellus hairs, depending on how you pronounce it. Now, vellus hairs are short, thin, barely noticeable hairs. They lack pigmentation generally. Uh, they're in fact translucent, although a lot of people will refer to them as blonde, but they are in fact translucent. And naturally, they don't grow beyond about two millimetres in length. Obviously, you can use minoxidil to force them to grow longer, which is what we do on our minoxidil beard journeys. But in regards to a vellus hair, the follicle itself is not connected to the sebaceous gland like a terminal hair is. On the contrary, terminal hairs are located deeper within the subcutaneous tissue. They have a strong network of capillaries to the dermal papilla, which brings more oxygen-rich blood, more nutrient-rich blood, and more androgen-rich blood to the hair follicle. And I'm talking in particular about androgenic hair here. So in terms of our beards, the hair that is terminal is generally thicker, coarser, more rough to the texture than a vellus, which is generally a lot softer, and a lot darker in pigmentation. Furthermore, they grow a lot faster and also they grow a lot longer naturally than a vellus hair would, which if you recall, I said is around about two millimetres in length. We are, however, ignoring the fact that those of us that use minoxidil can force these vellus hairs to grow longer and over time they may gain some level of pigmentation, although not as dark as a terminal hair would. And you've probably heard of these referred to as transitional hairs and we call them transitional as they fall somewhere between the two sets of characteristics of vellus and terminal hairs respectively. They may obtain some pigmentation and be slightly thicker than traditional vellus, but much less so than a terminal hair. Which often brings up the question, my hairs are dark, does this mean that they're terminal? Well, no, not necessarily. Pigmentation does not denote guaranteed terminal. It is but one factor, as I discussed before, in ascertaining whether something is a terminal hair or a vellus hair. And let's not forget transitional vellus, as I've said before, may be pigmented, some even appearing as dark as terminal hairs, but they usually tend to be lighter this can be different for people of varying skin tones. Generally, from my experience, people with darker skin tones have darker vellus, but that's not always the case. There are obviously exceptions to the rule. Now, another neat trick that you can do is actually use your pre-existing facial hair as a guide. And I'm going to assume that you started with some level of facial hair because most of us do, even if it's quite minimal. You can actually use your existing terminal hairs to compare them to your new growth. And usually 
you'll be able to tell the difference between the two. And if they're pretty much identical, then you're likely dealing with a terminal hair. If they are soft, thin and wispy, you're probably still dealing with a vellus or a transitional vellus hair. I'd also recommend that you take regular photos to be able to track your progress. You don't necessarily need to publish these publicly like I do, but I would suggest that you keep them for your own personal use as it does make it a little bit easier to see where you started from and where you've got to. To quickly round this section up, if the hair is pigmented, it's thicker, it's coarser to the touch, so more rough, and it grows much faster than a vellus would, then you're probably dealing with a terminal hair. Now, terminal hairs can grow at different rates as well, but it is typically much faster than a vellus hair. Now, it's not the most scientific method, but it's probably the best that we can do at the moment to really check whether those hairs are terminal or not. Me personally, when I finally do hit that stage, I'm probably going to use for a little bit longer just to ensure that they are all indeed terminal. But that's my own personal journey. You may choose to do differently. Now, I want to touch on a few myths that are often bounded around the Monoxidil beard community to hopefully dispel some of them and to give you guys a bit more information. Vellus turning terminal or converting to terminal. People say it in loads of different ways. It's false. Vellus do not turn terminal, they must shed and be replaced with a terminal hair. That's a biological fact. That's why people like Spanish Beard get such a bad rap within the community, because he tries to sell his beard powder as something that will convert your Vellus hairs to terminal hairs. It's biologically impossible, they are completely different types of hairs, so I would honestly recommend that you stop listening to him. He's a snake oil salesman who is just trying to make as much money as he can off of our community. A shed Vellus is guaranteed to come back as terminal. False. It can take more than one shedding cycle for terminal hairs to grow in the place of vellus, and there is no guarantee that one shedding cycle will return terminal hairs, though this can happen occasionally, but the point is, it's not guaranteed. The last one is how long you should use the product for. Now, we have people like Spanish Beard out in the community telling people that if they use it for longer than six months, they'll become dependent on it. It's nonsense. It has no scientific backing whatsoever. I actually do have a video on this if you do want to go and check it out. But the other side of that is that people are saying you need to use it for six months minimum, which is also false. For some people, it takes six months to get terminal hairs, but barely anybody achieves this. There is only one minimum use until the hair is terminal. That can take an indeterminate amount of time and for all we know it might not happen for some of us. It's likely that we will see our hairs go terminal eventually but we cannot know for sure. Either way arbitrary timescales are one of the reasons that so many people lose their gains. They do six months and assume it's some sort of definitive timescale. Thanks for watching guys. I hope that this has been informative for you. If you do feel like you've learned something from this video please do hit that like button. If you feel as though this video will help somebody else then please share it with them and do comment any questions or queries below. If you you want to keep up to date with my videos then please do feel free to hit that subscribe button i've been adam at the beard solution and i will see you guys again next time you don't rate me because i ain't got a blue tick but i got one on the top and that gave me i don't even know what's real